Hi, Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. For this project, I wanted to make a cross grain box out of this walnut. But I didn't want the whole box to be walnut because, well, if the lid and the box is all walnut, to me it all blends together. It's very dark wood, very pretty wood, but it lacked a little bit of pizzazz. I wanted a little bit more. So I dug out a piece of poplar and made a lid for the, for the box. But instead of that being plain, I decided to decorate it with the infinite access chuck so that no lid for, this, for a box like this will ever be like this one. Let's make this cross grain box. For this project, I'm first mounting a small block of walnut to the face of my chuck jaws and held in place with the live center. I had sawn this wood fairly close to a circle to reduce the amount of rounding. I'm using a bowl gouge to finish the rounding process. Then mark for a mortise since I want to hold this wood later with an expansion hold. I have to make sure I touch only the left point to the wood. Bad things happen if the right point touches. Why an expansion hold? Because I want to preserve as much wood as I can for the box wall height. Then cut out the wood with a parting tool and a skew. This will become the inside of the box. Now I'm flipping the walnut around and securing it with the chuck. I can properly address the bottom of the box. After just a little truing up of the bottom, I'm again marking for a mortise and cutting it similarly to the first mortise. Then rough turn the exterior. I want a bead at the bottom and a curved side. With most of the wood completed, I'm backing off the live center to remove the small spigot. Now I can reverse the walnut yet again. And I can focus on the interior. I'm starting with a bowl gouge to hog out as much wood as I can. Then I'm switching to a box scraper to cut straight sides and a smooth flat bottom. Nearing the bottom, I stop for a measure to see how much more to go. I'm switching out to refine the exterior since nothing is ever exactly on center after reversing. Then sand and finish all except the bottom. I'm using brush lacquer. Now for the lid. To start with, I'm roughing the lid the same way as I did the bottom. Mounting to the face certainly saves time from drilling for a screw chuck. This is much like a bowl bottom. I'm cutting a dome with a mounting tenon. It can be a tenon since I want to preserve wood in the center and not at the perimeter. Now I can reverse the wood into the chuck so that I can access the interior. Next I'm fitting a mortise to the bottom. This will be a somewhat loose fit in case of grain movement. After it fits, I'm using a bowl gouge to remove interior wood. I'll sand and finish the lid's interior now while I can. This is one reason I like lacquer and shellac. They usually don't show when I blend unfinished sections into finished sections of wood. Now I can flip the wood over again to finish the exterior of the lid. I'm expanding the jaws into a mortise in the lid. Now I can refine the dome for the top of the lid. I'm sanding now so that I will have a good background to the small detail coming up next. Now I've used hot melt glue to attach the lid to the work platform for the infinite access chuck. Except that the work platform is being held in my scroll chuck. The work platform 
has a mounting tenon I can use whenever I want something perfectly concentric to the primary turning. I'm cutting a shallow cove in the surface. Now for the infinite axis chuck. I've marked angle divisions on the perimeter of the work platform. I'll use these to align the chuck since I want features with equal spacing. I use the live center to indicate the new turning center, then tighten the chuck. I'm using a sharp small spindle gouge to gently cut the features. Each feature does not take very long. I'm sanding each before loosening the grip from the PVC. When I can, I sand with the lathe running, then finish with a little sanding with the lathe off, then loosen the PVC and move to the next feature. I'm cutting in six concentric features into this lid. With all the features finished, I'm putting the work platform back into the scroll chuck for a final light sanding and finishing with lacquer. When dry, I buffed both lid and base. And my lidded cross grain box of walnut and poplar is finished. Often I don't like the look of poplar, but this piece is stunning. The lid's surface is broken up by the eccentric features. No other box will ever be the same as this one. I'm happy. That's all for my walnut and poplar lidded box. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. Please wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough protection. You'll thank me later. I'm Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. Come back next week for a new wood turning video.